If you're a Zoho CRM user, at some point when you implement the platform for the first time, you're going to need to import your data. So in this video, I'm going to show you how to import your contacts into the CRM. Now, there are a couple of ways to get the contacts in the CRM. One is through manual entry one at a time, and you can just go and create a lead, contact an account, put in the phone, the email, those sorts of things. Other times you might want to integrate into the platform where you've got an online form or a booking platform or even sales IQ, the chatbot can then integrate and put those contacts back into your database, creating either a lead contact or an account or a deal in some cases. Now someone asked me the other day, how do I import a spreadsheet of contacts? So that's what we're going to talk about here today. Okay, I'm inside CRM. Now I'm on the goals module just because I don't have to display information and then blur the screen. But the thing is still the same. Any custom module that you create, you can do this with. So if you go in the top right, you've got this blue button. Now if you're in the contacts, it's going to say create contact. If you're in leads, it's going to say create lead. But on the right, I've got this drop down arrow. Now I'm going to select that and I'm gonna get this little list here and I'm gonna select import and in this case it says goals but it could say contacts, deals, leads or if you've renamed contacts to be humans, it's gonna say that. I'm gonna click on that one and then it's gonna take me to this page here. Now, this is where you can do a couple of things. One is you might already have a spreadsheet full of data. The other thing, you might want to upload it and make sure that it's in the right format, in which case you can download a sample spreadsheet with all the right headers. And then on this one, you can integrate from another CRM. So let's look at that first. So in the list of CRMs, we can see the Salesforce, Zoho, a couple of others here, Capsule, HubSpot, Act, Bittrex, other CRM. And when you put in other CRM, it's going to ask you, I've just put in some random letters, but on the field mapping, this is what it wants to do. It wants you to upload files. So that's pretty much the same as if you were going to do the spreadsheet anyway. And then from there, you've got upload, field mapping, module file mapping, field mapping, review and finish. So let's go back. Now let's have a look at the CSV. So I've downloaded a sample CSV. And if we have a look here, we can see there's a number of fields across the top. So whenever you're importing software, the top is the fields. So the header of each column is the fields and the row across is each individual record. So it might say first name, last name, email, phone, etc. Now there's a few other system fields here. So let's just expand these out and we can see there's name, goal owner, goal ID, created by, created ID, modified by, modified time, date, etc. There's all that information in the background that helps the system run effectively. But each of these ultimately boils down to the fields that are on the record. So if we quickly come back here and have a look, let's just hit cancel and then let's go into a record. Let's go create goal. And we can see that we've got goal name, exchange rate, time, OS, URL, city, all the things that were on that CSV. Now, if you've got another spreadsheet, you can import all the data onto that sample spreadsheet and use that one. Otherwise, if you know what you're doing with header tags and field names, then you can simply just create your own spreadsheet and then import that. Now, some fields are important. So if you've got this red slip just on the side of the field, that means that that is a required field. Now, if you need to import records without the required fields, you can go into the settings on the page layout and then deactivate the validation rules for those fields. And then just remember to reactivate them afterwards. If you're finding this video useful, please hit subscribe, leave a comment and give us a thumbs up. Okay, so turning off the validation rules, I'm gonna click here and I'm gonna to go to edit page layout. This is the record name and by default, you cannot turn that one off. You can see that the, the uh, more button here is hidden and you can't actually make any other changes. However, so you can see this field here, if it had a validation rule, you could turn that one off. Or we go edit properties, and then you can have this checkbox here that says required. So if that one is selected, then the field has to be filled out upon creation of the record. So this record here is inside the actual record and we can see there's the name of it, closed business. We can see OS URL, all the same fields that were in that spreadsheet. So if we bring back over our spreadsheet, we can see OS browser URL, etc. Okay, so I'll put some test data in this spreadsheet. So we can see I've added Mac, Safari and Google. And then in my second record, I've added Windows, Edge and Google again. So that's for OS browser and URL. 
Okay, so to add the record, now I'm on the record page itself, but I need to be in the list view. So I can just select that module again. Now I'm in the list view here and we can see there's one record that's been created. Now, if I come up here to where it says create goal, I'm gonna select the drop down. Then I'm going to go import goal. And then from there, I'm gonna come over here and go to browse. I've already created the file and I just need to select it from my file explorer. Okay, so I selected it from the file explorer off the screen so that you can see it's just loaded up here and we get a little tick. Now all I need to do is select next. Now on this screen, it's asking if there's records that are already in the system. So when I exported the sample record, it showed me the first line, which was that single record that was in this module. But over here, it's asking me, do I wanna add new records as new goals? Do I wanna update existing goals only? Or do I wanna do both? So maybe I exported the spreadsheet, made a few changes, and I'm loading it back in. Or skip goals based on certain criteria. So I'm just gonna go add as new, and I'm gonna click next. On this screen, it's now asking me to map the values of the spreadsheet to the values in the CRM. So fields in the file versus fields in CRM. So it's already picked up a couple that it recognizes. So we've got goal name and we've got goal name. Now you do have this other feature here, which is replace empty values with. So we get the ability to add something else there. And then you've got add another field to this mapping. So you might be able to add one name going into two fields, as an example, or one detail going into multiple places where it says goal owner. So we might be able to look up the particular user. So if I select that, it's gonna show the users that I have in the CRM, and then I can select that user and it will automatically link those records to that owner. So goal ID, this is the sample data from the file. So that gives you a bit of a preview as to what was in there. So if it just helps you to map them. And then up here, you've got mapped fields and unmapped fields. Down on the bottom left, you've got reset the field mapping or apply auto mapping. And then assign default values. So there might be additional things that are in the system and you wanna go into the fields and say, you know what, we know that all of them are of a particular country. So I'm gonna select country. Now it's saying that it's already been mapped and by assigning a default value, it's gonna override the mapping. So I'm going to do that just as a demonstration. And in here, I'm gonna type in Australia. Now I can go through and do multiple. So we'll just do that one for now. Come back to field mapping, and then we can go through here. So created by. All right, so let's scroll down here. So we can see here is Mac, Windows, Safari, Edge, Google, Google and that is mapping the OS field to the OS field. Now, if you've created your own spreadsheet, you have to kind of come up with your own linking. So like if you wrote operating system in full, then you'd know that OS in, in the CRM, in the file means the same thing. So you can just link them. Time is obvious, device is obvious. Now, most of these have auto mapped because it came from the export sample file. So it's pretty close. Now I'm gonna select next. So we can come up here and we can have a look at the unmapped values. Now, I'm not gonna worry about these because these are all just system fields and it's probably gonna create new versions of that anyway as I create the record. However, if I choose, I can start to link some of those. The other thing you have the opportunity to do at this stage is create new fields. So if there was something that you wanted to track them by that you didn't have in the spreadsheet or that you didn't already have on the record file, you can just go create new fields and then it will allow you to create fields for the ones that are in the system, in the spreadsheet, but not in the software. It will allow you to create fields for the ones that are in the file, but not in the CRM. Okay, so I'm pretty happy that we've got everything that we need to map connected. And I'm just gonna come down here and I'm gonna select next. It's gonna ask me about the 12 fields that I don't have mapped, but I'm okay with that. So I'm gonna say, yes, continue. At this point, it's gonna ask me whether I want to trigger some certain things. So for example, assign owner based on assignment rules. Now, if I was uploading a whole bunch of leads, I might be able to assign to the specific sales manager based on the state or the region or the postcode, if I've got those rules set up anywhere else in the CRM. Then on trigger automation and process management, you might want to create email notification to a certain person if the lead has been created. Now that's a process automation. Now 
the trigger might be that new field by record type is created. The problem though is if you upload a spreadsheet with a thousand records, they're gonna get a thousand notifications. So you might choose not to select that. Then when it comes assign follow task, when it comes to assigning follow up tasks, you can assign a task to the record owner or you can create a workflow task. So maybe you do wanna create a, a, a whole list of tasks which are not gonna notify the salesperson but they are gonna have a list of things to do to work through that list of contacts or leads. All right, and then the last one really to a record approval. So I'm just gonna click finish. Okay, so this will now run an asynchronous job. So that screen pop-up has just said that this will run in the background and we'll get a notification down on the bottom right when that has been completed. Generally only takes about uh, a few minutes because this is just being run to help the performance of the platform. And as you can see just here, that notification has arrived. Once you receive the notification, you just need to refresh the browser in order to have those records displayed. Now we can see our duplicated closed business record and test one. So if we open those up, we can see this is the one we created with the Mac OS and Safari and Google. And test one has our Windows OS, Google and Edge. And that's how to import records into Zoho CRM. I hope you enjoyed watching. If so, please check out this video.